Good morning. I have come to a really beautiful location here in Derbyshire in the uh, southern part of the Peak District which is called the White Peaks and um, today I am at Islam Hall. It is a really really nice old house. Formerly there would have been an Elizabethan manor house on here but today uh, the building that we see uh, dates back to 1826 and um, it's now a youth hostel. It's no longer lived in. Um, it was very dilapidated and was actually sold to be demolished. Um, but parts of it were saved and you can now stay here as part of the youth hostel. What a view. Look at this view from Island Hall. Out over the uh, surrounding countryside, which is Dovedale. If you follow the walk through um, those fields, you will come to the river where you can find the famous stepping stones here in Derbyshire and if you follow the path all along that river it will take you up to a gorgeous little hamlet called Milldale and there you find one of my favourite cottages which you'll have seen me share photographs of quite a lot but what about these views? Seriously, what a place to build a hall You've got the tea room just up there which is actually really nice and cosy. We've stopped there a few times when we brought Tidy for a little wonder. And that overlooks the hall here. So this is all that remains of the house. Not all that remains, it's still absolutely ginormous. But look at these views that you could wake up to. Aren't they amazing? Can you imagine this place in its heyday? when the full extent of the house was there. What a place. So that is Holy Cross Church, which has a old Saxon cross inside. Very, very old. And I'm gonna take you inside and we'll see what we can find. It's also the burial site of St. Bertram. And I believe um, just behind the church is St. Bertram's well which was in use long before Saxon times, so very, very ancient. I'm so glad it's dry at the moment. It's been raining almost non-stop for the last two weeks. It's been torrential. We've had the odd day, which has been sunny. So whenever it has been, I've made a beeline straight outside. Um, but even on the drive here, I thought when I woke up this morning, oh great, it's really sunny, I'm gonna go out. And then as soon as I start driving here, it starts throwing it down. <laughs> um, but I've got my wellies, I'm all prepared. I've got my nice uh, raincoat, so it'll be all right. But I'm kind of, uh, hopeful for spring. I can't wait for spring now. I'm not very good with January. I try with it. I used to hate winter, absolutely hate winter, but now I really enjoy the cold cold weather, the beautiful frosty mornings and the snow and getting to just layer up and get cozy. But the sort of in-betweeny weather when it's not that cold enough to be frosty or snowy, Instead, it's just raining non-stop. That I can't deal with very well. I mean, I like a bit of rain, don't get me wrong. And the countryside and the gardens will definitely be benefiting from it, especially after this year, the summer that we had, it was scorching hot. Um, but day after day after day of it, it's getting a bit relentless. But anyway, it's nice to be out and exploring this morning and go for a good long walk. Gosh, it's so quiet today. Other than those people in the distance, I have barely seen a soul. It's just been me and the birds. So this is inside the church, Holy Cross Church, which has built up around the sixth century shrine of St. Bertram. 
His tomb is just through here. So Bertram is reputed to have been the son of an 8th century Mercian king. Now, as a young man, he travelled to Ireland, where he eloped with and married a beautiful princess, uh, returning with her to Mercia. Now, towards the end of their journey, the couple had to take shelter in a forest where a child was born to them, and his wife and their child are said to have been attacked and killed by wolves. Bertram set off to seek help, and he didn't get back in time, so they, they unfortunately died. And he was so, so distraught with grief that Bertram renounced his royal heritage and decided to spend the rest of his life in solitary prayer and meditation. From here, the church was built up around this 6th century shrine. This is the Pike Watts Memorial. What a beautiful vaulted ceiling. And I love how it's illuminated on both sides by these windows. I've just noticed that above the entrance to the chapel are two maiden's garlands or virgin's crowns. If you've watched my episode where I take you to Ashford in the water, I go inside the church there where they have four of these maiden's garlands. There's no inscription on these to tell their age, nor the names of those that they commemorate, but such decorative paper wreaths like these were made by friends and family of the deceased, um, usually unmarried and younger women or girls. The garlands would have been carried at their funeral, and afterwards they hung them above the pew. This custom largely died out about 200 years ago, so these are probably quite old, but because they're made out of paper, they are quite rare survivals. It's looking very ominous out here. Looks like it might have rain at any minute. I've just spotted another Saxon cross here. Look at that. It's a shame, in a sense, that it's been left to the elements. Well, that was uh, quite interesting. I've never actually been inside that church before, but I enjoyed that, learning a bit more about the history of St. Bertram. I'm going to head out across the bridge now over the river and I'm going to go and uh, have a wander around the woodlands. So these would have been the woods where supposedly, according to the story, his wife and son would have died. Here is St Bertram's well. Quite a sizeable well. For now, oh, muddy. For now, we are going to go across this bridge. Well, it looks like the bridge is closed, so I guess I won't be doing Bertram's Woods after all. Um, so I guess I could either have a little wander through Dovedale, um, or go find somewhere nice and cosy and warm to sit for a minute, because it's just started to rain. Um, yeah, I'll see. I'll see, I'll see. Can't make my mind up what to do. Well, it has absolutely chucked it down. Um, so while it's still raining, I am going to go and find a nice cosy pub, hopefully with a fire to hang out in. Well, no 
success. The uh, pub that I was thinking of is closed until Thursday and today is Wednesday. So uh, no cozy pub and fireplace for me, I'm afraid. Um, the other ones that I had as backup ideas um, are also closed till Thursday. So yeah, that's it. I'm at a bit of a loss really. And it's still absolutely checking it down. So I think I may call it a day and come back out tomorrow. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Hopefully we've got no, no rain tomorrow, please. Oh, it's just never ending rain. Although, on the plus side, I have got my car back. Um, it was clutch problems. Um, we got a quote for a full clutch repair, uh, master cylinder, slave cylinder, and that came back as a thousand and ten pound plus that, <laughs> which we can't afford. So, um, Thankfully, Pete is an absolute genius with cars. Um, he had a look, he said it's definitely not the slave cylinder because there was no oil leakage from there. Um, so we thought we would fix the master cylinder, which is what he did. Uh, we got a part, which cost us the grand total of three pounds. And that's it, I'm back on the road, thank goodness. Um, so yeah, nowhere near as bad as it could have been, thank goodness. Um, so yeah, I can be out and about again now doing my adventures. Uh, anyway, right, I'm gonna go home. I've had enough of this rain. I'm gonna go get cozy. morning everybody it is friday the 13th peter and i have just been off out for a really nice little lunch date at um, a lovely pub that we go to in the village of repton and um, we just had a nice little a little treat we had a pizza and garlic bread which was amazing <laughs> so good and now um, we've just come to cork abbey for a little wander around We've just been inside the uh, inside the stable rooms that hold the carriages. Now it's not often that they're open anymore. They always used to be open, but apparently the stables are run separately to the house now, and um, there's a lot less staff on the stable it's on the stable side. But it was really nice to see the carriages again, um, and had all the information about them. There's some really really rare ones in there, but I always remember um, my granddad. Ooh, excuse, that's getting really blowy. Um, yeah, I always remember my granddad. He made loads of model carriages. He actually set up the Guild of Model Wheelwrights here in Derbyshire. And um, he came here to Cork Abbey to see the carriages because they're quite rare specimens. There's not many that survive of these ones. And um, the staff at the time, they didn't know anything about these, these carriages that they had. So he went away and did all the research, find out what models they were and all the history about them and um, typed it up on his typewriter and gave them the information. So I wonder if that is the information that is still on the walls about them now. It's really fascinating. He was so good at carriages. I remember them. He was good, such detailed work. In fact, um, pretty much all of his carriages, except for a few that we still have in our loft, um, went to a museum in Devon. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I shall find out and I'll link to it below. But yeah, a little piece of family history there for you. Oh, it would have been so nice to go inside today, but it's closed for the winter months. Having its annual clean-up and conservation work to make sure that everything's preserved in its collection. But it'll be open again come March, I think, so I'll be back then. I'm going to go and check out the uh, 
the grounds up by the garden, see if there's any snowdrops out. I know at home I went for a wander around our gardens and our first two snowdrops are just about to bloom, which made me so happy. <laughs> Well, it looks like they're not out yet, but there's these clumps all over this this little patch of woodland. So it looks like they won't be too much longer. I've actually just found a patch. The first snowdrops of the season. Yay! This space here would have been an absolutely mammoth kitchen garden. And this is only part of it. This is just the walled part. Look at the size of this, the amount of food they must have produced. The orangery is my favourite space here at Cork Abbey. I share more information in my previous video, which I'll link to below. But it's just such a beautiful space. I love this dome on top. It makes the most wonderful light. I've just seen daffodils. The first daffodils I've seen this year. Oh, I don't know what these are, but these are pretty. If anybody knows what this plant is, please let me know in the comments below. Oh, that was such an unexpected surprise. That makes me so happy to see spring flowers are already on their way, reaffirming that, uh, yeah, spring is just around the corner and that makes me so happy. Um, I wasn't expecting to see a daffodil in January, but I suppose it is inside the orangery, so it's sheltered and uh, being kept warm. But that was a very, very nice surprise. In my autumn video, if you watch that, this is lined with dahlias of all colours. It's so stunning. In a few months' time, all the wisteria that is along the walls will be in bloom and over the art at the bottom. So that's going to be looking gorgeous. And through here is the other half of the kitchen garden. So you get loads of roses and flowers in here, lots of herbs, and they also grow quite a lot of vegetables which is lovely because they sell them. So if you're visiting and they've just harvested some, you can buy them and take them home, which is really nice. Still got some winter cabbages down here and Brussels sprouts. I've also spotted the rhubarb is coming up as well. So things are definitely still going on here in this corner of the garden and all along these arches. Can you see all of those daffodil bulbs poking their heads up? I'll come back next month because that's going to look really, really lovely. Here is the rhubarb bed. You can see the rhubarb's already starting to peek its head out. It'll have been under these pots, so it'll have been forced, making it nice and early. So maybe next time I come back, there'll be some to buy. So here in the garden, there's this little stand here. So they put the freshly picked produce on here and you can put your money in this little honesty box there. But yeah, a lovely idea. Helps this garden keep running and also allows you to enjoy some fresh local produce too. So this is the herb bed. There's a rosemary, thyme, 
oregano, lavender. This is marjoram, although there's not any out at the moment. And fennel too. Mint, we will be back. Chives, sage is still going. Golden marjoram, the curry plant, purple sage, more rosemary. They keep quite a lot here in this garden at Cork. And then here at the bottom is the apple orchard, which you will have seen in, in the other video, because they were very bountiful. <laughs> you get a lot of them here on these trees. And again, they sold them here in the garden, which is lovely. I've just seen inside one of these glass houses. It's closed at the moment as they've been doing work on it. Um, but they've got loads of pots. You can see all the daffodils are going to be coming up. In the back there, there's quite a few pots of snowdrops. And also they've got loads of potatoes growing down there. I wish I had a greenhouse like this at home. Oh, every year we try and grow our own produce at home. But it'd be amazing to have a garden like here at Cork. And just that amount of space. But yeah, we try and grow our own stuff. We've done, we always do beans, runner beans, French beans, uh, cucumbers, peppers, chilies. Uh, we have a pear tree, an apple tree, strawberry plants. So we do grow quite a bit of our own stuff, but it would just be nice to try and do more of it. My sister um, started off loads of lettuce and salad leaf varieties last year, and they did really well. So I think we're gonna try and do a lot more of those this year. But um, yeah, I'd like to film a video and take you along on our garden journey this year and um, try and learn lessons together because <laughs> I'm not the best at gardening. I do try my hardest because I love a beautiful garden and it's just so nice to be able to go out in your garden and pick your own fresh produce, especially for children as well. Heidi loved it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and do a lot more of that this year. So there'll be some garden fun <laughs> to be had. it looks like that is it for cork at the moment just a few snowdrops and a couple of daffodils but that's so heartwarming to know that spring is definitely on its way it will be here before we know it <sighs> gets me through the rainy days anyway i will see you next week if you have liked this video please do like and subscribe as it really helps us lots of love bye